So show me your badge. The one with my name crossed out. <laughs> with, your, with your name. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. You like that. And then um, um, tell me your name and, and where you, what you do, and we'll take it from there. Great. My name is Pat Lennon, and I work for the um, NGO called PATH. Mm-hmm. And my job is to help develop products for low-income populations. Yeah. And, and um, you've switched over from working for like a big corporate. Exactly. So, well, you know, tell me a little bit about that and why, how that worked out. Yeah, well, it's worked out great. Um, I spent the last 13 years or prior 13 years with Microsoft and their hardware group, um, high volume consumer products. And with that background, I wanted to take that into developing world settings in terms of making products that are priced appropriately, that are work reliably, and um, can be made at high volume. So I think it's the ultimate goal for uh, technology interventions for low-income populations was to get a lot of them out there. We want them in high volumes. What I see today um, when I deal with technologies for this space is really good technology ideas that aren't um, maybe particularly well executed from a consumer standpoint. Uh, I want to respect the needs and really the desires of these low-income users because they don't want to, I don't want to provide products or solutions that would highlight the fact that maybe they are poor. Can we respect them? Can we design products that have some desirability but still perform well and are at the right price points? So even if they're subsidized, you're still getting more for your subsidy dollar, but if they are purchasing, they're purchasing valuable goods. Sounds really interesting. I mean, so where... How come you made this switch? I mean, what, what was it that drove you to do that? Well, it's in the corporate world, you know, making consumer products. Um, you, it's hard to call that completely rewarding. I learned a lot. I really value my experience doing that. Um, I learned more there more quickly than I would have if I'd stayed in an NGO space, which I was in before. Um, having, having made the switch, um, I feel validated in that adding some passion about design, design for the user, um, bringing products that that really, um, we hope, will sell well and, and meet the needs of these people, but doing it for a good cause. So not just making products for profit for a larger corporation, but doing it in a way that's going to support um, support people's healthy lives. These children that are um, you know, dying at a young age, people, um, you know, morbidity rates, things, can we help? And I think we can. And good products are one of the pieces of the puzzle. Not the only answer, but a piece that needs to be be done better. But, but these products, I mean, the, the, the goal of them is they will be profitable products, right? Ideally. Ideally. We would, I think, uh, we talk about in the space of um, social enterprises um, or nonprofit businesses, but if you're making something, somebody, anything that's provided a solution, a bed net, um, a water filter, uh, condoms, whatever it is, Somebody has to make a profit somewhere to make that good. Those aren't done for free. They, people aren't losing money on those. So we, I would like to see a sustainable um, businesses support it. So if they have a good product that people want to buy, then maybe that supports their business. And they may have other products that they don't make as much money on or are subsidized that they're offering to even lower income populations. But ideally, you have businesses that are sustainable so they can go on uh, without subsidized funding that could be short-term or uh, cool. limit intervention. Yeah. That's really excellent. So, um, could you tell me your name again? My name is Pat Lennon. And you work with? I work with PATH, yeah. an NGO based out of Seattle.